Hi, my name's Lynn Watson, and I'm a deacon at Halstead Road Baptist Church. I'm also the adult men's Sunday school teacher. And today we're going to be talking about how Jesus healed a woman and also raised a girl from the dead. Our study comes from Mark 5, 21 through 43. It says, you know, it, it's just talking about a woman who pushed her way into the crowd around Jesus. She was unceremonially unclean, thereby rendering all who touched her unclean. Now when she touched Jesus, however, her, heal, her illness was healed. Jesus' purity was more powerful than her impurity. In this encounter, we see a glimpse of what Christ has accomplished for us on the cross. Through faith in Jesus' death and resurrection, our shame is removed, our guilt is absolved, and God begins His work of making us pure and holy like His Son. St. Jude's Hospital is known for treating what no one else can. After exhausting every other option, Worry and worried parents bring their children, hoping to find care no one else can provide, except St. Jude's. Because St. Jude's Hospital specializes in lost causes. But guess what? So does Jesus! As with St. Jude's Hospital, only those who have come to the end of their rope come to Jesus. People who hold on to their pride tell themselves they have what it takes to make it on their own. Self-assured people think they do not need Jesus, which means whatever they, whenever they face affliction, even if they find relief, they will find no true cure for the disease that ails them most. Unlike St. Jude's Hospital, however, Jesus offers no mere hope of a cure. He is the cure. He offers all He is and all He has. He offers Himself. In what ways does pride keep us from Jesus? You know, pride makes us think we can handle all of our problems ourselves, including our sin problem. Pride prevents us from seeing our sin for the deadly problem that it is. And pride makes us think we're big and Jesus is small. In Mark 5, 25 through 29, it says, Now a woman suffering from bleeding for 12 years had endured much under many doctors. She had spent everything she had and was not at all helped. On the contrary, she became worse. Having heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his clothing. For she said, If I just touch his clothing, I will be made well. Instantly, her flow of blood ceased, and she sensed in her body that she was healed of her affliction. This woman suffered deeply for 12 years the physical, emotional, and social cost of her incurable disease. But it was in some ways far worse than we can imagine in today's society. Sufferers can feel like outcasts in their suffering already, but we rarely intentionally shun them. We don't kick them out of worship services. We don't avoid them in the streets. Yet this woman lost everything on account of her disease. She was alone and cut off from others because she was unclean. According to Leviticus 15, 25-27, this hemorrhage of blood made the woman ceremonially unclean. She was cast out of Jewish social and religious life. Merely touching another person would transmit her uncleanliness to them, so no hugs, 
or a friendly shoulder to comfort her in suffering. She went to all the doctors, probably the best of her time in her time. But none of them could do anything for her. She spent all of her money searching for a cure and found none. She was even worse off as every attempt at healing failed. She grew more and more desperate. What are some ways people try to deal with desperate situations today? Well, we put on a brave face and try to ignore the issue most of the time. We seek all kinds of solutions and remedies, hoping one will eventually work. Or maybe we just lie and pretend it doesn't exist. Perhaps we run away from the problem. Or we get angry and vengeful. And some may turn to suicide. In her desperation, the woman reached out for Jesus, her last but greatest hope. How did the woman get to this point? She heard about Jesus. She heard that he was powerful and reachable. Others had come to him and found healing. When she learned he was in town, she believed he was drawing near for people like her. The woman didn't know the full power of Jesus at that moment. All she had was a simple but profound faith that she could do, that he could do what others could not. She somehow knew that he alone would, could cure while others had only failed. So she came empty handed and reached out for him. Romans 10, 13 through 15 tells us that before anyone comes to Jesus in faith, they must first hear about him. As Jesus' fame spread, this woman heard the message of hope from God, and she listened and responded. The woman understood a truth that too few of us do. When all is lost, Jesus is still reachable. We are never too far gone to reach out for Jesus. Isaiah 57, 15 says, God lives in a high and holy place that we cannot reach. But he also dwells with the contrite and lowly. God comes down to us. He comes low enough to reach people, barely making it through life. This woman knew that God's power was present in some way in Jesus. So she came in all her lowness and humility to meet him and be healed by him. Why should we be grateful to God that we can come to Jesus with empty hands? Because nothing we can bring can overcome our own sin. Because our good works that we would want to bring are no better than filthy rags before God. Because we recognize that our salvation is Christ's perfect work alone and it can never be undone. In Mark 5, 30 through 34, it says, At once Jesus realized in himself that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? His disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing against you, and yet you say, Who touched me? But he was looking around to see who had done this. The woman, with fear and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Daughter, he said to her, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be healed from your affliction. By faith, the woman ran through a crowd and touched Jesus just on his garment. That touch would have made Jesus ceremonially unclean. 
but the reverse happened. Her touch didn't make Jesus unclean. Jesus' power healed her and made her clean. That's what God grants through the touch of faith. Jesus takes what we can't live with and gives us what will make us live forever. It is the exchange every desperate heart truly longs for. Our sin for Jesus' righteousness. As the woman's issue of blood dried up, her faith was confirmed. But that isn't the only healing Jesus had for her. The power that left him through faith's touch was not the end. It was only the beginning. She went to Jesus for physical healing, but his power goes far deeper. What are some effects of shame in a person's life? Well, desperation and despair. Isolation from others, whether physically or socially. Separation from God for the unbeliever. A sense of separation from God for the believer. And sometimes we're just plain short-tempered with people. Jesus wanted, wanted to heal this woman deep within. He wanted to heal her shame and let everyone know what had happened. So he turned to the crowd of people and essentially called her out. He forced her to step out of the crowd, to come to the center of the street before all those who had despised her for her disease. What was Jesus doing at that moment? He was calling for her testimony of faith, for all to see and hear. Faith is more than simply a, a mental agreement of historical facts. Genuine faith begins with the recognition and confession of truth, of the gospel, followed by rece the, a receiving of Christ as Lord and Savior of one's life. The incident with the woman being healed actually took place while Jesus was on his way to the home of a synagogue leader named Jairus to heal his 12-year-old daughter. But after the interruption to affirm the woman's faith, Jairus received bad news. In Mark 5, 35 through 36, it says, while he was still speaking, people came from the synagogue leader's house and said, your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? When Jesus overheard what was said, he told the synagogue leader, Don't be afraid. Only believe. Jesus said, Don't be afraid. Fear is a natural response at a time as, such as this. What is more fearful than your own child's death? It's even more fearful than your own death. Because the death of a loved one, such as a daughter, parents can face their own death with more courage than they can face the death of a child. So with this instruction, Jesus was asking Jairus to do something any parent would find incredibly hard, if not impossible. Jesus also said, only believe. This was a positive command alongside a negative command. Jesus pointed Jarius away from fear through the power of faith. Jesus asked Jarius to have faith that the day would not end in tragedy, but in hope. Even a hope that points beyond death. Jarius had come boldly to Jesus, fell at his feet, and pleaded for his daughter's life. And the sick woman were vastly different in social standing. But before Jesus, there is an ounce of difference between them. Both were needy for a power they did not possess, a power no one else had access to, a power that could heal disease with merely a touch.
for all their differences. Faith bound them together, and faith kept them going, even amidst the worst possible news. In Mark 5, 39 through 42, it says, He went in and said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? This child is not dead, but asleep. They laughed at him, but he put them all outside. He took the child's mother, father, and those who were with him and entered the place where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which translates means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl got up and began to walk. She was 12 years old. At this, they were utterly astounded. How will you respond in faith to Jesus? Power over sickness and death. How can you reach out to people who are suffering from shame and isolation? And who will you call to faith in Jesus for the eternal healing of salvation and resurrection? When I say that, I mean me and you. Who will you call out to faith in Jesus for eternal healing of salvation and resurrection? I'd like to pray with you right now. Father, you are purity and light itself. No sin or infirmity can dwell before you. Yet you send your beloved Son, Jesus, to dwell among us in our sin, weakness, and morality in order to overcome them on our behalf. For this we are grateful. And we ask for the Holy Spirit's assistance to make known the truth about Jesus' power to heal and restore a world of dying and shame-ridden sinners. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.